My name's Christopher Perry, a silversmith here at Perry Glossman Company, a family-run business for over 30 years. What we are going to make today is a sterling silver pepper grinder. Here we can see David fitting the spinning chuck to the lathe. The material is a one mil thick sterling silver sheet. It's made up of 925 parts silver and the remaining 75 being copper. Here he's using spinning tools, which we call burnishers, to form the material over the chuck. The material will then begin to harden as he forms the blank over the chuck and then David will anneal the blank. Prior to annealing, he applies a paste to the silver to prevent it from fire staining. Fire stain is an oxidization of the surface of the silver. The annealing softens the material and allows him to continue, otherwise the material would split and crack. What we can see here is David using a section chuck. A section chuck allows a more complex form to be formed using the spinning technique. There you can see him removing the sections from the blank. Once the piece has been formed, I then have to fill it with pitch. Once the pitch has cooled, it solidifies within the form and allows chasing to take place. I then need to accurately mark out the piece using a number of different tools. The piece is divided into 80 sections which then have to be accurately drawn on using a pencil and a marker pen. The pattern that I'm drawing on here by freehand is partly because of the design and the function of the piece. Once the piece is marked up, I then begin to chase the piece using a series of steel punches and a specialist hammer. The process of chasing is an embossing of the surface of the material. Chasing is distinct from engraving in that no metal is actually removed during the process. The overall form is that of a sphere and without the applied texture that chasing can give it would be difficult to use as a paper grinder. Chasing is a process which has been used for many generations to decorate fine silver and gold objects. Here I'm using a planishing tool to give the chasing a, a greater depth and to angle the surface. I, I file the piece to give the edge a crisper finish. What we're seeing here uh, is me scribing the line using a pair of dividers so we can have access to the top of the pepper mill. Here I'm using a small hand drill to drill a hole 0.7 of a mil in diameter. This will allow me to thread through a very fine piercing saw blade once I have threaded the blade, I then proceed to saw out the top of the piece. This is a very delicate process using a very fine saw blade. Here we can see the base, which has also been spun. Here I am producing the internal parts of the pepper mill. These sections have to be soldered together. It is important that the mechanism is aligned very accurately within the top. This is held in place before soldering using a technique called stitching. The solder that we use is a silver solder which is silver that's been alloyed with other materials to give it a lower melting point.
Here we can see me preparing silver screws which will join the components together later. Using the same technique I also manufacture the, the feet of the pepper grinder. The base of the piece holds together the internal workings of the pepper grinder. The pepper grinder is polished in two halves before assembling. 